The most played game mode in Brawl Stars follows one simple rule. Be the last person standing, among 10 other people. A classic battle royale that is seen in many other games. However, Brawl Stars suffers from one distinct problem when it comes to their take on the battle royale. And that is teaming. Teaming is something that is very much possible in other games such as Fortnite or Apex Legends. But developers often rule this as a bannable offense. Not Supercell though. In fact Supercell themselves aren't fond of the idea of teaming, but will refuse to punish players for doing so. They think it's unreasonable to ban players for simply doing what they need to do to survive. I mean isn't that the only rule? In the first year of Brawl Stars it didn't take long for teaming to become a strategy in Showdown. Two brawlers really defined the first wave of teaming. Those brawlers being Dynamite and Barley. These two brawlers were different compared to other brawlers at the time. You see, these two were classed as throwers. They had attacks that travel in an arc over walls, rather than a flat line. Nowadays, we have six throwers, but in 2017, Dynamite and Barley were the only two. So why were these two so fit for teaming? Well teaming relies on two players being close together in order to work as one bigger threat. Dynamite and Barley weren't exactly the best at close range combat, so players realized that they didn't pose much of a threat to each other if they were close together. Also, being able to attack over walls proved to be a significant advantage. So why not double up on that advantage? No one could reliably get close to a team of throwers, let alone take them out. Mortis was the only brawler that stood a chance, but even he had a difficult time. It didn't take long for this strategy to blow up across the community, and as you can expect no one was truly a fan of it. But at the end of the day what choice did you really have? A year later, and teaming is as popular as ever. It's now extended past throwers to the point where anyone will team with anyone based on the mutual promise that they won't harm each other. It was in 2018 where Supercell decided to put a stop to it. Or so they thought. Modifiers were introduced in late 2018. More specifically, meteors, healing mushrooms, energy drink, and life leak. Each of these modifiers would benefit those who stood alone. For example, energy drinks would spawn near players with no one around them. Meteors would target groups of people to give teamers another thing to worry about. Problem solved right? Well, no. Energy drinks spawned wherever the heck they wanted. Meteors might just decide to target you alone because, why not? Eventually, Supercell refined them to become more reliable. But out of these four modifiers, one really stood out. Life Leak. This modifier worked by having your health slowly tick down constantly. The only way to heal back up, attack other people, and that worked. With Life Leech, teaming was eradicated. No one even dared to get close to someone else because every hit point was sacred. But while teaming was gone Supercell weren't satisfied. Life Leech was interfering with one of their core concepts for Showdown. A simple battle royale. Life Leech was everything except simple. Imagine a new player expecting a battle royale experience only to see their health ticking down and fluctuating like crazy. Confusing right? So while Life Leech remains in the game to this day as a bonus modifier, Supercell were back to square one. Two years have passed since the release of Brawl Stars. Teaming is still an issue. And Supercell didn't do much to tackle it this year. In fact they began to embrace it as a strategy. In 2019, nothing was done to stop teaming. But something released in August of that year was about to propel teaming into new territories. Let me introduce you to 8-Bit. 8-Bit was about to become the face of teaming. Not because he was a thrower, but because of one star power he had called Extra Life. To put it in perspective of what's happened to Extra Life today. It was nerfed, nerfed again, nerfed once more, then straight up deleted. By the name you can guess what this ability does, it's an Extra Life. It respawns you in your exact location with full health and ammo. In 3v3 game modes this star power was less than spectacular. Everyone could respawn anyway so who cares about this star power. However, as you can guess, in Showdown this was a monster. Okay, Derek, hey guess what? You thought you won. But you did it!
Where are you at? Oh my gosh! You only have one life in Showdown, so having two lives was an insane advantage. 8-Bit quickly became the go-to brawler for Showdown. Trophy records that were never seen before were being reached. You died? Oh well. How about I come back and kill you anyway? Better luck next time. Supercell were quick to nerf this and removed the invincibility shield when respawning, then eventually removed all his ammo when respawning. Surprise surprise. It was still strong. I mean an extra life is an extra life. There is nothing else that could be done to nerf it. So Supercell finally pulled the plug, and removed it entirely in late 2020. 8-Bit's teaming arc was finally over. Besides the removal of extra life for 8-Bit, not much really happened in 2020. Teaming just became a part of Showdown. Everyone knew about, everyone was using it. What choice did you have? If you teamed, you won. If you refused, then you get teamed on. So let's skip forward to 2021 where we had two significant things happen for teaming. In 2021, the meta felt a bit stale. Sharpshooters dominated the scene, leaving tanks in the dark for months. Supercell was tired of the same cycle of buffing one archetype while nerfing another. So, they decided to try something new. Something that would indirectly cause the next wave of teaming. You see, tanks always had one issue no matter what the meta held. They were often regarded as punching bags. Their sole existence was to give enemies supercharge. It was not a fun time to be a tank main. This is where Supercell decided to give tanks a new perk. Introducing traits. The first trait to be added was given to four brawlers. Frank, El Primo, Jackie, and Bull. Now, whenever they received damage, they would get a little bit of their own super charged up. After taking about 10,000 damage they could get their super without landing a single attack. It was a great buff. In fact, it needed to be nerfed, but after this, these four were in a much more reliable spot. Except for one. El Primo benefited a bit too much from this. His super is a long range elbow slam that deals damage on impact. Players quickly realized that Primo was fit to be the perfect teaming companion. He had plenty of health so attempting to backstab him gave him plenty of time to react. And his new trait meant that charging his super was almost twice as fast. There was no counterplay. This strategy was nowhere near as broken as extra life, but it still became a viable strategy for most players. This was the first wave of teaming in 2021. But let's talk about this second wave. Buzz is an assassin brawler released in the very same update where Primo quickly became the king of teaming. His super ability is a grapple that could be shot out and pull Buzz to whatever it connects to. Buzz also has a unique trait to him. He has a ring around him at all times and any enemy inside that ring would begin to charge Buzz's super. The more enemies that are inside the ring, the faster Buzz will get his super. I think you know where this is going. Strangely enough, Buzz would not be an issue until almost two years later. So, we will come back to him later. In 2022, not much happened for teaming again. Supercell was still trying to figure out a solution to teaming. Is it truly impossible? At this point, it's been 5 years since Brawl Stars was released and still nothing has been proved to be a suitable way to counter teamers. Was it time for Supercell to make teaming a valuable offense? No. Supercell was still sticking to their plans to find a way to eradicate teaming. Unfortunately, in 2022, Supercell were not able to find this solution. El Primo was still running rampant. Tensions were still rising between teamers and the community. Supercell were fighting a battle they could not win. Here we are at present day Brawl Stars. Even though we are only halfway through this year a lot has happened for teaming. But sadly, none of it is really positive. Remember Buzz from earlier? Well, people have finally realized the strength of his trait. Masses of Buzz players would group up in Showdown using his trait to charge his super in literal seconds. Bear in mind the other brawlers would typically take 45 seconds to a minute to charge their super ability. As you can imagine this was a huge advantage for Buzz. The most surprising thing is that it took almost 2 years for players to notice this. 
Of course there were a few buzz players that's used this strategy between this time, but eventually people caught on that with every additional buzz player, the horde of buzzes would get exponentially stronger. The sad part of this is that to this day buzz has not been nerfed in regards to this wave of teaming. The only reason why we don't see Buzz much anymore in Showdown is because he was overshadowed by a brawler that no one saw coming. Finally, we reach the most recent teaming strategy, Meg. Meg is a legendary brawler that isn't very popular in the community. She was your typical mech brawler. She would begin in a weak form with a pea shooter pistol. But once she got her super ability charged up, she would transform into a large robot dealing devastating damage that would slowly lose health over time. Meg has never been a bad brawler, but out of all the legendary brawlers she was the most unpopular. Supercell decided to make Meg start in her mech form whenever she started a game and when she respawned. Oh, and the mech no longer loses health over time. That's right the one thing that stopped her from being overpowered was now removed. Meg quickly rose to the top of the meta. And it proved to be a terrible time to be a showdown player. Remember rate bits extra life from earlier? Well, Meg is the reincarnated version of that. Did you take out her mech? Too bad now you have to deal with Meg's base form as well. Did you not kill her in time? Guess what she has her mech back. And has regained absolutely all of her health. Meg was now the next best teamer. This was purely because she quite literally was not threatened by any other brawler. Trying to backstab Meg would be nearly impossible. There is so much health to chew through that by the time you were done, you've probably already had 1000 bullets shot inside of you. And that brings us to today Meg was nerfed a few days ago but she shows no signs of being any weaker. That might be because Supercell decided to nerf something that was entirely irrelevant to the fact why she was strong in the first place. But oh well. I wanna buy all these gems, but which code do I use? Bro, are you stupid? Oh right, of course it's code carnage.